Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning and welcome to the lecture series Introduction to Interaction Design. In the previous lecture, we discussed certain techniques for data collection such as interviews, questionnaires and observations. Uh, today we will see some techniques for analysis uh, for uh, this data. So, we will discuss the difference between qualitative and quantitative data analysis. And uh, we will also see how can we analyze the data gathered from questionnaires, interviews and the observation. So, the kind of analysis that can be performed on a set of data will be influenced by the goals identified at the beginning of the project from the data that is gathered. So, broadly speaking qualitative analysis approach a quantitative analysis approach or a mixed method combination of both can be used. So, the last approach which uh, uh, involves qualitative and quantitative approach is very commonly used. It provides a more comprehensive account of the behavior that is being observed or the performance that we are measuring. So, the process of data analysis typically involves the following steps. So, first is defining the research question or problem. So, here we will identify what we want to investigate or what we want to understand from the data. The second is collecting data. So, here we will collect uh, data from various sources like surveys, experiments, observations or maybe uh, even databases. The third step is cleaning and processing the data. So, in this step we will prepare the data for analysis purposes by checking for any type of missing values or any inconsistencies in the data. In the fourth step exploring and visualizing the data. So, here we will use descriptive statistics and visualizations to understand the data and to identify patterns or any kind of relationships. The fifth step which is the analyzing data. So, here we use statistical methods and techniques to test the hypothesis and draw conclusions from the data gathered. The final step is interpreting and presenting the results. So, this step involves summarizing and uh, communicating the findings of the analysis in clear and concise manner. And uh, for this charts, tables or graphs can be used for representing it. So, data analysis is used in a wide range of fields like business, healthcare, uh, social sciences and also engineering fields. And uh, it is essential for making informed decisions and solving complex problems that we face in today's uh, data driven world. So, we will see qualitative and quantitative approach of data analysis. So, quantitative data is in the form of numbers or data that can be easily translated into numbers. So, for example, the number of years of experience of a person or the number of clicks that is uh, required to reach the customer care support. So, quantitative analysis uses numerical methods to ensure the amount or size of something. So, for example, attributes, behavior or strength of opinion of the participants of the study. So, another example to describe a population a quantitative analysis uh, will conclude that the average height of a person is 5 feet 3 inches tall. But in the qualitative analysis, we will summarize it by saying that the average, the height is average of the population. 
So, qualitative data is in the form of words and images and it includes a description and quotes from the people who have been interviewed. It can also have photos and videos. So, it is possible to express qualitative data in numerical form, but it is not always very useful or meaningful. So, the qualitative analysis focuses on the nature of something and can be represented by themes, patterns and stories. So, here we can see in this example that what are the steps involved in analyzing the different types of data. So, in the interview we can see that the raw data is from audio recordings, interview notes or video recordings and in the next table we can see the qualitative data that they are open uh, ended questions, uh, video pictures and respondents opinions. So, they all form the qualitative data and the quantitative data will include the age, uh, job, role, experience, a similar kind of uh, data that we get. And for processing it, we will use transcription of recording or we will expand the notes. In the question is, we can see the raw data is written responses or online databases because we are not conducting this questionnaire in the physical mode. And uh, similarly, we can see how the qualitative and quantitative data is uh, utilized and as well as the processing step which is cleaning the data and filtering into different uh, data sets. And on the other hand, we can see that observations will require the notes as well as other mediums like videos or photographs or uh, even the think aloud diaries. So, we will see think aloud technique in a bit and at the same time the qualitative data we will see the behavior of people. Uh, the description of the task that was undertaken and uh, similarly the quantitative data. So, we can see that how the data can be categorized once it is collected and it makes it very easy for the researcher to see that what information will go where. So, it is easy to then uh, identify themes and other relationships. So, in interviews the interview notes uh, have to be expanded as soon as possible the interview has taken place. So, that the interviewer's memory is clear and fresh. So, uh, in audio or video uh, recordings they can be used uh, to help this process or the data may be transcribed for a more detailed analysis. But transcription takes significant effort and time because people talk more clearly than people can take notes or type and the recordings is uh, sometimes not clear. So, we can consider whether to transcribe the whole interview or just sections of it which are relevant for the researcher. So, deciding what is relevant or not can be challenging. So, we have to revisit the goals of the study to see which particular passage addresses the research questions and which can guide this process. Close ended questions are usually treated as qualitative data and are analyzed using a basic quantitative analysis. So, for example, a question uh, which asks for the age of age range of the respondent can be easily analyzed to find the percent of uh, respondents in each of the categories. More complicated statistical techniques are needed to identify relationships between responses that can be generalized uh, like uh, whether there is an interaction between the condition that we are testing and the demographic. So, uh, for example, is there any relation between time of day and using any particular application for example, Twitter. So, open ended questions typically result in qualitative data that might be searched for categories or patterns of responses. Second is question is. So, questionnaire responses can be collected using online surveys and the data is automatically stored in a database. The data can be filtered. So, according to maybe a question. So, this allows analysis to be conducted uh, with subsets of the data and also to draw certain conclusions for more targeted goals. To conduct this kind of analysis, 
uh, we require sufficient data from a large sample of participants. Observations can result in a wide uh, variety of uh, data like notes, uh, photographs, think aloud recordings, videos and audio recordings. So, together these different types of data can uh, give us a very uh, rich picture of the observed activity. The difficult part here is to work out how to combine the different sources to create a coherent narrative of what we have recorded. So, for observation in a controlled environment, initial processing might also include uh, synchronizing different data recordings. Transcriptions and observer notes are most likely to be analyzed using qualitative approaches, while photographs will provide us some contextual information. Data logs and some elements of the observer's notes will uh, be analyzed quantitatively. So, two basic quantitative analysis techniques that can be used effectively in interaction uh, design are averages and percentages. So, percentages are useful for standardizing the data, particularly to compare two or more sets of uh, responses. So, there are three different types of averages and using the wrong one can lead to some misinterpretation of the results. So, mean refers to the commonly understood interpretation of average, uh, which is add together all the figures and then divide by the number of figures with which we uh, began. Median is the middle value of the data when the numbers are uh, put together and mode is the most commonly occurring number in the data set. So, quantitative data can usually be translated into rows and columns, where one row equals one record. Uh, for example, a respondent's uh, answer. So, spreadsheets, uh, softwares like Excel or Google Sheets are uh, used commonly as they are very easily available. If these are entered into a spreadsheet like for example, Excel, then this makes the simple manipulation and data filtering process very easy. So, basic analysis might involve finding out values that are significantly different from the majority of the data. So, producing a graphical representation provides an overall view of the data and any patterns that uh, we may find there. So, qualitative data can be collected various uh, with various methods like focus groups, observation, uh, case study or even analysis of the document. So, data is uh, usually recorded as a text or a video recording and analyzed uh, using techniques like content analysis, grounded theory or thematic analysis. So, qualitative data can be analyzed inductively. So, that is extracting concepts from the data or deductively, uh, which is using existing theoretical or conceptual ideas to categorize the data elements. So, which approach is used depends on the data obtained and the goal of the study, but the underlying principle is to classify elements of the data in order to gain insights towards the study's goal. Identifying themes takes an inductive approach, while categorizing the data takes a deductive approach. So, one of the most challenging aspects of identifying themes or new categories is determining the meaningful uh, uh, quotes which do not overlap. Another is deciding on the appropriate level of selection for uh, example, a word, phrase or maybe sentence or a paragraph, uh, what level are we choosing. So, this is also dependent on the goal of the study and data that is being analyzed here. So, three basic approaches to qualitative analysis are identifying themes, categorizing data and analyzing critical incidents. So, these three basic approaches are not mutually exclusive and they are often used in combination. So, for example, while analyzing video content, critical incident will first be identified and then a thematic analysis can be undertaken. So, the first step in qualitative analysis is to gain an overall impression of the data 
and to start uh, looking for interesting features, topics or certain patterns. So, some of these will emerge during data gathering and this may also uh, suggest the kind of patterns to look for. But it is important to confirm and reconfirm findings to make sure that uh, the initial impression was not incorrect and does not bias the analysis at the same time. So, a theme represents a pattern of some kind, it could be a particular topic or feature that is found in the data set. So, which is considered uh, important, relevant or it could also be an unexpected information with respect to the goals that we began with. So, themes that are identified may relate to a variety of aspects like behavior, events, places uh, where those events may have taken place. So, each of these kinds of themes may be relevant to the study goal. So, for example, descriptions of typical users uh, may be an outcome of data analysis that focuses on the participant characteristics. So, although thematic analysis is described in this section on qualitative analysis, but themes and patterns may also be uh, can be emerging out of quantitative data. So, the affinity diagram approach seeks to organize individual ideas and uh, insights into a certain hierarchy. So, which shows common structures and themes. So, notes here are grouped together when they are similar in some uh, structure, in some fashion and the groups are not predefined, but uh, they emerge from the data that we have. The affinity diagram is built gradually over time and uh, one note is put up first and then the team searches for other similar goals that are relating in some way with each other. So, inductive analysis is appropriate when the study is exploratory in nature and it is important to let the themes emerge from the data itself. Sometimes the analysis frame that is the themes are chosen beforehand. So, th these are based on the study goals. In this particular case, the analysis proceeds deductively. So, here uh, is an example where the think aloud protocol was recorded and then transcribed before we analyzed uh, for certain uh, themes or patterns. So, one of which was to identify the usability problems that the participants were having with the online environment. So, once the data is categorized, the results can be used to answer the study goals. So, this also helps identify patterns of uh, behavior and recurring problems if there, are, if there are any problems like that. Think aloud uh, protocol means that the overall view of the usability problems could take uh, context into account. So, in this particular example, the respondent is saying the screen is very difficult to read, I keep forgetting what I just read. I cannot retain the information, the text is small and some letters do not have clearly defined edges, I get a headache. So, from this uh, information, uh, we can categorize uh, and identify themes uh, which relate to the interface problem or also to the content problems and we can also find further themes on analysis. So, data gathering sessions often result in a lot of data and uh, analyzing all of this data in uh, any detail can be very tedious and time consuming process. So, critical incident analysis or CIA is one approach that helps to identify significant substances of the data for more detailed analysis. So, CIA typically involves these steps. So, first is identifying the critical incident. So, where we select uh, an event or experience that is significant in some nature and has the potential to provide insights into the underlying issue or the problem that may be there. Second is describing the incident. So, this involves uh, providing a detailed account of 
what really happened during the incident. So, this can include the actions of the individuals who were involved or the context in which the incident occurred and also what was the outcome of it. Third is identifying the factors that contributed to the incident. So, this involves examining the incident to identify uh, what were the factors that contributed to the outcome. So, this can include uh, individual factors like uh, knowledge, skill, attitudes and also the environmental factors like for example, resources, policies or certain procedures. The fourth is reflecting to the uh, on the incident. So, this involves reflecting back on the incident and considering how it could have been managed uh, differently, maybe even better. So, this may involve considering uh, some alternative approaches or certain strategies that would have been used to manage it better. Fifth step is identifying opportunities for improvement. So, this step involves uh, identifying opportunities for improvement in the way that similar incident uh, are managed in the future in a better manner. So, this may involve changes in policies or procedures or uh, maybe training programs can be developed. So, uh, depending on the problem that we are working at. So, uh, critical incident analysis is used in areas of healthcare, social work and uh, other uh, fields where CIA can have serious consequences. So, there are several uh, types of uh, analytical frameworks and uh, which help in analyzing and interpreting the data from a qualitative study. So, here there are six uh, different approaches which are mentioned in terms of the level of the granularity which is basically the detail that is involved. So, uh, for example, the conversation analysis has uh, a fine level of detail and it allows the details of what is said and how do we examine it. But in the system based uh, framework, we can see that it takes a broader scope and it has a coarser level of uh, granularity or detailing. So, for example, what happens when a new digital technology is introduced in a uh, hospital for example. So, so, this conversation analysis may result into insights related to users interactions uh, through a collaborative technology uh, while the systems uh, based uh, analysis may result in insights related to the changes in uh, practices and uh, maybe worker satisfaction, uh, improving the workflow and uh, maybe also the impact uh, on the overall work culture. So, for data analysis, it is uh, possible to perform these functions using only manual techniques also, but it is quicker and easier and more accurate to use a software tool and in majority of cases it is more helpful. So, usually a, a simple spreadsheet application uh, can be effective. But there are other more sophisticated tools uh, which are available to us. We can support uh, the organization in coding, in manipulation of the uh, data and to perform certain statistical uh, tests. So, there are several tools available to support the researcher with data analysis. And so, for example, we have NVivo, Deduce. So, NVivo uh, supports uh, annotation and coding of data. Uh, for example, it could be document, photos, videos and also audio files. Some notes can be searched in NVivo or through the help of keywords and it can also help in content analysis and uh, uh, then the quotes and data can be explored, uh, merged and manipulated in several ways. So, it has several advantages. Uh, it is particularly powerful for handling large uh, sets of data and can uh, generate output for statistical packages like 
SAS and SPSS. So, SAS which is the statistical analysis software and SPSS which is the statistical package for the social uh, sciences, they are popular uh, quantitative analysis uh, packages. So, that support the use of statistical uh, tests. So, SPSS uh, offers a wide range of tests to determine the statistical significance of the data. So, choosing an appropriate way to present the findings of a study that we have conducted is as important as choosing the right analytical approach. So, this choice will depend on the data gathering and the analysis technique that we have used at the same time also the audience and the original goals of the study. So, in some situations the details of data collection and the analysis will be required. So, this may include pieces of data like maybe photographs or some uh, video recordings of uh, participants using the products. In some other situations only the salient trends, headlines and uh, uh, overall implications will be required. So, a number of uh, structured notations have been developed to analyze, capture and present uh, the information for interaction design. So, these notations uh, follow a clear syntax and semantics which have been developed to capture the particular viewpoints. So, uh, here work models use simple conventions for representing the flows and the breakdowns. Other methods like model modeling language, unified uh, modeling language UML uh, have stricter and more precise syntax to be followed and they are often used to represent the requirements. So, storytelling is an easy and intuitive way for people to communicate ideas and experiences. Stories are used extensively in interaction design and scenarios, stories are used to uh, communicate findings and also act as the basis of further development. So, there are three ways uh, in which storytelling can be useful. So, first is with, uh, with the participants when they may have told their own stories during the conversation uh, while data gathering. So, these stories may be used to communicate the findings. The second is the story based on the observation. So, like ethnographic uh, field study, so they may be employed for further data gathering. And third way is when uh, stories may be constructed from smaller or repeated incidences that we have found in the data. So, in this case uh, stories provide a way of rationalizing and collating the data to form a representative account of a product's use or a certain type of uh, event. Any uh, story collected through data gathering process may be used as the basis for constructing scenarios and it can then be used for requirements and for other design activities. To summarize the findings, presentation style uh, will usually be used in combination. So, for example, a story may be ex uh, expressed with graphical representations of activity or the demographics. Tables of numerical data may be represented as graphs and diagrams. So, careful interpretation and presentation of the study results is important and we must take care that findings are not overemphasized and evidence that we uh, are using is not misrepresented. Uh, so, one common mistake is over generalizing the results without any strong evidence. So, this happens uh, especially in qualitative studies. So, words like majority, most, all, so these should be avoided to explain the uh, final results. Uh, because it may happen that we may incorrectly uh, uh, you know analyze the statistical results. So, for example, even if 90 percent of users prefer 
uh, one design over the other, we cannot conclude that one design is better uh, than the other one by 90 percent if the sample population size is say 100 persons only. But if the population size is say 100,000, then this understanding can be true, but there may be some other factors that will be involved at the same time. So, we will uh, stop here today and uh, in our next session, we will discuss discovering requirements, uh, focusing on exploring the problem space and uh, defining what will be developed. So, thank you and see you in the next class.